This is Matt Drummond and I'm back with some more musings. Today we're tackling one of the more difficult actions to animate, the turn in place, or as I like to call it, falling with a twist. Now if you've ever tried to animate something like this, then the chances are you've soon found yourself mired in a mess of bad foot placement, weightlessness and a tangle of RGB curves. Now, before we get our Pantones in a bunch, let's look at how we can nail this action in three easy steps. Step A, direction that establishes the direction of travel. Step B, correction, which actually acts like a stabilizer in correcting that weight shift mid-turn. And step C, the recovery. Now, sometimes step C is actually a full step or merely a shuffle, but it's an important weight shift that beds our character into its final pose. Now, before we get stuck into animating, we need to know where our keyframes are going to be. My total animation length is 48 frames or two seconds, which is a good length of time for a turn in place. I will break this down into an action length, the three steps of 36 frames and a recovery length of 12 frames. Now to add a little realism to it, I'm also going to add some kinetic energy loss into the mix here. And that's going to be at an arbitrary value of 80%. So I'm going to pick a keyframe out of the air, and in this case it's going to be 10, because it's easy to multiply by or divide by. Then if we take 80% of that, that will be 8, and 80% of that will be 6.4. We now add up all of those steps and get a value of 24.4. Then we take our action length of 36 frames, divide that by 24.4 to get the ratio 1.475 which we use to multiply each of the step values to get our correct frame length. So when we round it all up, we end up with keyframes on frame 15, frame 27 and frame 36. Now that we have our keyframes, we now need to find our lift frames where the foot is rising. For that, we turn to the golden ratio. C equals cycle length. A equals C divided by 1.618, the golden ratio, and B equals C minus A. Now, if we apply this golden equation to each one of our keyframes, we end up with lift frames on frame 9, 22, and 32. Now we're ready to animate. We start by simulating the rise and fall of the center of gravity in relation to each footstep. And we also employ that kinetic energy loss spatially, so we actually decrease each value by 80%. We do the same with the X value, where he's actually shifting left and right in relation to each footstep and back and forth as well. We now apply those same concepts to the rotation values of the COG. However, we're going to leave the Y rotation out at this point in time and put that back in in relation to the global turn. Now, we copy all of those values to both the abdomen and the torso and we offset them accordingly so that we end up with a bit of follow through. I'll also copy these values to the hands and give it a little bit of sway and prevent any hyperextensions there. Now comes the turn. This is where we put the value of 90 degrees into the global rotation and we ease it in and ease it out. It's important to note that the next steps will be based on this value. So now we'll turn the head and the center of gravity towards the direction of travel. I'll start the head turn on frame nine and it comes back to a perfect loop at the end. Now we start animating the feet. We simulate the rise and fall of the feet. You'll notice here that I've broken the tangents at the edge, so there's a little bit of a stamping. I then add some heel lift and toe splay, and I offset the little X um, of the knee just to give it a bit of a jolt. Next, we copy the rotation value of the global controller and paste and invert it on the plant phase of each foot. This will keep it oriented to world space. On the lift phase of each foot, we rotate it to match the direction of the turn. The last stage involves planting the feet down so that they don't move. And we do this by creating some locators. As you can see, I've got a red one, a green one, and a blue one. The red and the green are the most important ones. We start off with the red locator and we vertex snap the plant phase of the right foot all the way up to frame 15. We'll then go to frame 36 and work backwards with the green locator. With step A and step C firmly in place, we can now work out the best position for step B, which is of course the correction phase. So we can place it so that it naturally sits under the weight of the character during the turn. 
So now we should have a pretty solid action that we can go in and make some final adjustments to, maybe add some more momentum to the COG, maybe some drag to the hands and fingers, and in my case, to the tail. In Maya, I'll then go and convert this to a clip that I can reuse and I can even re-weight so I can get turns that are less than 90 degrees. So there you have it. By utilizing the inertia method of targeting the COG rather than trying to animate the feet first up, along with some math and the golden ratio, we've been able to take a traditionally difficult task and make it very, very simple.